free Scaro! Hello, everyone. Welcome to Radio Free Scaro, episode number 791. I am Stephen Edmonton. Morning, Vancouver. And Chris in Edmonton. We're, uh, we're, we're start kicking off um, our Torchwood series of commentaries today, everyone. Torchwood. We're doing Torchwood. We're doing it. Um, so exciting times, I guess. Uh, fun. Yeah. yeah fun. <laughs> Well, I mean, they're, they're times. They are um, times, yep. Um, and the, the times, the times they are changing. I... Because everything changes. I, <laughs> that's the episode title right there. Look at that. I did it. Um, I, uh, when do we start recording those? Like December or November? I want to say. ago, yeah. December. Yeah. It's a while ago. Uh, December 7th is what I have. December 7th. We <laughs> my, started my recording. of recordings here. Wow. Pearl Harbor Day. Of Pearl uh, Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hell of a thing. So... Yeah, well, everything I, did change on Pearl it, Harbor Day. It, it, it was a day that lived in infamy. It well, and we started torture commentaries that day too. So that's yeah. what I meant. I know. I mean, I know this from Sorry. the Michael Bay extravaganza, Pearl Harbor. <laughs> I had to. I had to watch that at work back when I worked worked in TV. It is not good. No, it's it bad. is not good. It's very bad. It's it a, looks nice, like, like every Michael Bay film. It looks very nice. It just doesn't amount to much. <laughs> did it look nice though? Did it? Yes, it did. Uh, I don't know about that. Like He's it. very good at making things much like Zack Snyder. He's great at making things look nice. Uh, your mileage may vary for the rest. Who is in that? Ben Affleck, Kate Beckinsale, Josh Hartnett. Am I getting the, yes. the trio right? I keep thinking right? Matt Damon is, but he's not. No, no. he's not. Uh, and I don't... Alec Baldwin. Cuba there's Gooding this, Jr. I mean, there's a lot of names in it. Yeah. I just remember like Love Story. shot in shadow as per usual. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember it anyway. I watched, listen, I watched a lot of movies when I worked in TV and I don't remember any of them. So apart from because most of them are garbage. Apart from the, the stars of Pearl Harbor. I don't even remember what year that was. 2002? 2000. 2000. 2000, really? Prophetically enough. Well, maybe 2000. Yeah, I think you're right. It was 2001. It feels like a post. Right before a certain other spectacular event. Yeah, it feels like a post 9-11 kind of thing that they might put together. In fact, it was not. No, you've looked this up. It was. No, I saw it before 9-11. So. Oh. Oh, well, there you go. Well, there you go. There's uh, our Pearl Harbor Harbor is the movie of the week in this movie history thing uh, that we're doing. Don't bother. Our two word review. And only and only today. I'm I'm a little um uh upset. Not upset, but I'm a little I feel a little empty uh, <laughs> cuz you know, why not? Uh but be, you know, for the past 30 weeks apart from 2 weeks in around Christmas, uh, I've been watching season 18 box set. Uh, one episode a day, and of course, Tom Baker's uh, finale, Legopolis Part Four, happened last week. So now, like, I have oh. nothing. I have no. I have no weekly Doctor Who thing to watch right now. So <laughs> you certainly couldn't call it BritBox, which you subscribe to, and watch it there. Well, no, but I've been watching. You know, on the anniversary of the broadcast, and so now oh, there's there's nothing right now. So. So, so because I'm, of your own arbitrary rules, you can't do a thing. Well, boo yeah. Well, here's, I, I was going to save this until, until later, but uh, a listener of ours um, and, and a diehard supporter of ours, Joe Mendoza, has, um, he, he emailed me um, earlier this year saying, by the way, he's figured this out, is that if you start watching at this point, uh, one episode a day of every televised piece of Doctor Who related stuff, being you know Torchwood included and everything else. If you watch one thing a day, factoring in like a couple of um, seasons beforehand, uh, you you will get to the 60th anniversary on the day. And I thought that sounds very silly. Then I thought that's impressive. What if I watch just Doctor Who stuff? <laughs> and so. He figured that out as well. And so he, and so I think it's June 8th. I actually put a calendar event on it. I think June 8th, factoring in like two, um, eight to 10 episode seasons of, uh, to come yet before the 60th anniversary. Uh, if you watch one episode of Doctor Who a day, you can get there. And I'm thinking about doing it. Cause it's only like 25 minutes for the most part a day, right? I mean, I didn't want to do that. So. Or that if you're looking for something. We just hit the 16th anniversary of Rose's original 
legitimate broadcast. We did. So you could watch season, series one. That's, that's 13 weeks of your time. That's true. Yeah. We're getting up to the 16th anniversary of the, uh, the, uh, awful BBC story about Chris Eccleston leaving Doctor Who as well. Like, didn't that come on the 30th? Like that was like. It rings a bell. Yeah. Literally within days. Yeah. But, uh, no, but, oh boy, speaking of Eccleston, I mean the, the trailer, uh, for, um, the new big finish uh, came out and it's him. It's him. He's Chris Eccleston. It's Chris Eccleston's doctor who uh, in audio form. It just sounded like him. It was perfect. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool hearing him in the role, uh, again. Uh, and it, <laughs> it doesn't feel like, you know, he's back and it's about time. <laughs> when, when, uh, cause they, they have most of his lines, not subtitled, super titled. I know they have most of what he says appears on the screen yeah, uh, or appears in the trailer. And then <laughs> eventually he says, fantastic, because yeah. of course he will. Yeah. And when that happened, all I could think of was from the Simpsons, say the line, Bart, say the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's one of my favorite memes, by the way, on the internet, whenever like something says, you know, it's usually to do with like how, how this person under 30 bought a house and the, all, all the people lead into Bart, it goes, oh, actually I got my parents to pay for most of it. Yay. Oh yeah. Of course. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a, movie. there's a strain of that in indie uh, film. Just go out and make a movie. Oh, by the way, my parents are rich. <laughs> <laughs> that too. But, uh, but not Eccleston. No, he came back, he came back and he recorded some stuff. So yeah, the trailer's out there. Very exciting. Very exciting to have Eccleston back at uh, the, it, it's released in May, of course, when everything else is coming out, everything else is coming out in May. I think the, uh, Lego, uh, Star Wars Skywalker Saga game, I think that's coming out in April or May. Mass Effect, uh, Legendary Edition, which I've been looking forward to coming out in May. Everything's coming out in May. Like we might all be vaccinated and then like, oh no, I wanted this, like this here, this, what you're doing now here's, is what I needed like six though. months ago. What? Video game announcement dates are a suggestion at best. So expect a couple <laughs> of those to go. Well, maybe well, not with Mass Effect because well, it's remastered older stuff. But eh, I don't know what they're, I mean, I saw the trailer and it looks, you know, they, they spruced it up, but I don't think it's just like, like them, you know, touching up stuff. I think it's pretty much Horizon a full on Forbidden West is supposed to be coming out in the fall. No. Um, and I have tied no. buying a PS5 and a bigger TV to that. So I think I'm probably buying those in 2022. I think you <laughs> are I too. I guarantee it'll be deleted. I think or you are deleted, too. not deleted, but delayed. Yeah, because I, I bought an Xbox One for Red Dead Redemption 2, and that was delayed 18 months, mm -hmm. I think, by the oh, time yeah, it's it it, it, And you know, that's fine. The game's better, totally fine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's still crunch time. That's the thing. It's still crunch time. Like, uh, you know, any game, any game goes through this awful thing called crunch time where they tax the mm -hmm. poor workers for the most part. Yeah. These are the things to look forward to though, I guess. Um, just like uh, to, uh, we're looking, for, looking forward to, this is a surprise thing. So Comic-Con, since we're you know talking about like post-pandemic stuff here, folks. Yeah, we're there. We're there. We're talking about possibly thinking yeah, about doing things. Um, the three of us don't have jabs in our arm yet. Uh, so it, this feels weird to talk about things in the future. And not by I, choice, I'd like to add. Yeah, I know. It's just like, yeah, we're defined. No, we're, we're not kicking his We'll literally be the last people. Maybe not Chris, but uh, uh, um, Comic-Con, we're going to go virtual in July. I think, okay, that makes sense. And still because, are. You know, and still are. Uh, Saturday, uh, Variety announced that, no, we're doing a special edition in-person gathering in San Diego on Thanksgiving weekend. That seems really stupid. There's my review. <sighs> Why is it stupid, Warren? Why do you think it's stupid? Out of curiosity. Here. Well, actually, don't even look at me. Go to io9 and look at their, I'm not going to say what the <laughs> title is, but you'll be able to tell because they're very <laughs> salty about it. But this guy right. makes some very good points. He says, besides the fact that there's no guarantee everybody's going to be jabbed or there won't be deniers who come to this thing and cause a whole bunch of problems, regardless right. of that, it's going to be held on Thanksgiving weekend in the States two years in when people can finally see their families. Do they really want to spend it with a bunch of sweaty nerds in a hall somewhere? Do the celebrities they want to bring in do that? Probably not, right? So just yeah. the, and plus travel, which is a zoo to begin with, with Comic-Con, will be triple the zoo because of, presumably, Thanksgiving traveling, if all goes well. So it's just, it's a dumb, do it the day, to, the week afterward or something. Like it's, All good points. I think he's absolutely right. It's a stupid idea. Yeah. I mean, you know, Chicago... Also, you've just done the virtual one anyway, so why bother? I suppose. I mean, Chicago TARDIS does, does, has always, or for the most part, always done Thanksgiving weekend, but, you know, they're much yeah, smaller. Yeah, but Chicago convention. TARDIS is what? Two, three thousand people compared to... Yeah, not even that, but... Two hundred thousand? Uh, yeah. Three hundred thousand when you all support people and everybody else has to go down there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems weird. It, just, but it, you know, right, and right now it just seems weird that oh, really, you're doing an in-person thing? Like this is something we pre 
prepare for? What what do we do? It just feels, I don't know. Right now, I'm, in a, I'm not in a mind. Like, I can't even think about April right now. You know, like, oh, April? Is there a thing happening in April? Oh, I don't know. We're going to go it's outside for April. literally three days away. And I can't either. <laughs> I know. It's like, see, it feels like an eternity away right now. So Also, uh, let's have a much moratorium on April Fool's Day. This entire year has been <sighs> April Fool's Day, people. Uh, well, so no, none of I those japes. I think we pretty much shut it down last year. I don't remember. Call, maybe I, I just so, yeah. Maybe I just hid under a blanket last year for April Fool's Day. Well, it was but. three weeks into the pandemic really yeah. being declared, right? So people were like, no, I haven't got time for this nonsense. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. It's... Uh, I saw uh, Ken Deep, um, our friend, and of course he used to run Li Who, and has sort of put on various Doctor Who events as well. He he got his second jab, and uh, he posted on Instagram, and he had a mask on, perhaps advertising the fact that maybe there'd be a Doctor Who related convention in November as well. I mean, these these are the weird things to sort of like, you know, I, for some reason I think I may have said this before, but like it felt like the pandemic would just sort of end for everyone at once, but it's really just a slow nope. fade, you know, take forever. Like, you know, sports. It's like that TV show that just won't get canceled. <laughs> hmm. The one we've based a podcast on for the last 14 and a half years. No, uh, no. I was thinking like some show nobody watches, but it's still around for some reason. Like Oh, Walking Dead. Walking Dead. Yeah. yeah that Walking one. Dead's uh, a better example. Yes. Uh, um, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're, it's, it's a fade out. It's basically we're fading out of it. And it feels kind of strange. Be, you know, I, sports right now is my only outlet for fun um and you know gradually in the states right now you know fans are being allowed back in like there's you know 1400 people or 1600 people at like a hockey game or something unless you're texas which they're going full on 100 percent capacity on opening day for texas rangers games this week <sighs> um you know it, it by by august or by november maybe we'll be out of this more that it won't sound as silly and maybe people will think yeah i want to crowd into san diego comic-con again because i miss those days and (laughs) i would too i'm not saying i wouldn't want to i just don't think it's this is not the year maybe not thanksgiving weekend yeah Yeah, maybe maybe like october well i don't know new york comic-con like is that a thing that's happening i don't know like i i i it's completely understandable that they want to plan ahead Mm-hmm. And and you know get things ready just in case, but as long as they're willing to you know change their minds if they need to. I yeah. think part of this too is that they th- their virtual con compared to a lot of other ones was regarded as kind of a disaster last time. So maybe that the, that the sting of that is still there for them, and they're like, well, we'll go back to what we know, even though we're having to do the virtual one again. So yeah. maybe that's part of their thinking. Could maybe be. I mean, there's also the possibility that the world may literally never go back to how things were yeah. and that's that has to be you know kept in the back of the the organizers minds mm. a young boat stuck in the suez canal showed us the way <laughs> yeah maybe will that be just out? just dig in will that be out oh it's fascinating you know there there is a um there is a um there's a, there's a thought that uh just tying this in here here's your segue folks uh that um we have more doctor who missing episodes from the later days, like the late sixties, more than the, the early sixties, because not because fewer countries were, uh, choosing to not buy Dr. Who, but because of the Suez war in 1967 made passes through the Suez canal actually more trepidatious and dangerous. And so fewer countries bought it because that was their main outlet to get Doctor Who episodes. So like, if you notice like the international distribution in the, you know, pre-1967 is a lot more <laughs> complicated than like the four or five countries, like basically the UK was shipping them to like, you know, quote unquote safe countries that they could get stuff to like New Zealand and Australia and not the other countries um, that needed the Suez Canal to get them to. So Right now, just think about it. All those tapes of uh, television episodes, because they're still shipped on big two-inch reel tapes uh, on big boats through the Suez Canal. Um, this this could instigate a new missing episodes crisis for every time. <laughs> yeah, the Midsummer show. Murders missing episodes <laughs> debacle. Yeah, it's going to be tons. Yeah, all those archive episodes of uh, they're just oh, we can't afford it anymore. There's a big ship blocking the Suez Canal. So the Punky Brewster reboot missing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, it's not like you can't just send it to somebody by, <laughs> I, I don't know, no. internet. Two inch master tapes worn. That's how these things are made on. Still. Pretty sure that they even don't the most tell backwater you of backwater places they, can they, probably get they a, a torrent going. Nope. They don't. No. It's two inch master tapes. That's, okay. that's They you, don't you tell insist. you this. They don't tell you this, Warren. That's how it's done. 
They being who? Exactly. I love how Warren is taking me literally, me talking about two-inch Master No, I'm just games. stringing you along for the hell of it. I'm just, okay. as, just as ridiculous <laughs> as you are. All right, that's good. Uh, what are we talking about here? Let's talk about uh, Essential Terrence Dix collection. How about that? How's that? We, I, to Chris, you put on the news list like months ago. There's an Amazon listing for this with no details whatsoever, but we talked about yep. it being a thing. Because the, 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 the winning, well, yeah, winning. Um, so all, all the stories are voted upon, voted upon by the public. So yeah, uh, this is the, as we talk about it today, this is the first that we've seen the actual, um, uh, book titles. These are some uh, good choices. Announced. Way to go, voting public. Yeah, the essential Terrence Dicks vo- uh, voted by, uh, as chosen by fans, uh, a two-volume collection of ten stories that he novelized, uh, being Dalek Invasion of Earth, uh, Bottomless Snowman, Wheel in Space, Wheel in Space, uh, Auton Invasion, Day of the Daleks, and then uh, the second volume contains Genesis of the Daleks, Pyramids of Mars, Talons of Wang Chang, Horror of Fang Rock, and uh, the Five Doctors. So, yeah. Doctor. Coming out uh, August 26th, uh, the anniversary of his uh, passing with forwards by Frank Cotter Boyce and Robert Webb. So there we are. It's all in a nice collection too with a big, big, massive Target logo on across both spines there. So, <laughs> Yep. And a BBC this. Books logo as well. But uh, but yeah, at least the Target one's there. I like, it's just, well, there's, well, there's Target logos on the top, but then there's the giant Target logo across the spine. So like that will stick out on your, on your bookshelf. So... That's pretty cool. Yep, that's coming out uh, August twenty sixth when we're all we're all vaccinated and, and mm-hmm. yearning to go to conventions and maybe we'll go to a theater and watch that new Peter Capaldi movie uh, with some other people in it as well. I'm told, but uh, Peter Capaldi's in, he's got bolts in his head and stuff. Um, I saw the trailer. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I mean, it's James Gunn, so it'll probably be funny, right? But uh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Peter Capaldi, yeah. it's Peter Capaldi, he's in it. How much is he in this? I, mean, I don't see. Okay. That's the thing. I don't. I don't know how much. John he's Cena is actually quite amusing in it from the trailer, what I can tell, and so is yeah. Marco Robbie. No surprise there. But, and it's it's probably gonna be better than the original one, which is not good. Um, but I don't know. Oh, if it's not Marvel, I'm not gonna get excited about superheroes. Basically, oh, I'm I've I've put those to bed anyway. So, but it's Peter Capaldi. So, mm. we'll see. <laughs> um. Hey, if you're in the UK and uh, you um, are yearning to get uh, versions of the collection Blu-ray sets, because apparently they're a hot commodity over there um, with their big giant packaging, uh, they're they're being reissued starting with seasons 12 and 19 in standard packaging. Here's the thing. I don't know what packaging they're getting in the first place, because I think I assume, Chris, that we probably have the standard packaging anyway, just your basic Blu-ray cases right we have more standard i guess like even uh, more standard um, wow even maybe. more standard like, so, some some of what we get has had like slip covers and some of it has not right or box whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. um the the pictures shown for this show that there's still like a box whereas right. more recent releases for us is just the plastic case with the discs inside so yeah i don't I don't really, really know because they don't do that great of a job describing what the differences are between the standard and a uh, coll- uh, limited edition. No. Um, just says bespoke premium packaging featuring a beautifully presented box. And, and I, oh, I found uh, it amusing. Okay, so you don't get the booklet, I guess. We don't get the booklet. No, we don't get the booklet. I, I found it very amusing that <laughs> like clockwork, you could set your watch on it. There was fan anger about this. <laughs> Fanger, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, well, uh, most of the anger is that like, you know, those people who bought, you know, cause what, like 500 or 5,000 season 12 sets came out at first and then they had to re-release some because the demand was so high. And now, you know, this is good. I mean, you know, it's good that people actually have a chance to get them. Like even the season eight Blu-ray, yeah. I think was having a distribution issues as well. We don't have these issues. That's the great thing. As Mark Ayers said last week, you know, basically they iron out all the kinks and then North America gets the fully, uh, um, unblemished versions of these and in greater quantities. So. Well, no, I guess that's one of the uh, perks of having however many months delay for the North American market is they have time yeah. to produce the extra. Uh, extra um, numbers and, you know, fine tune or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So good news for the UK. You can have these. I mean, I, I, I would prefer smaller packaging anyway, because, you know, less space on the shelf means more space for Lego. So, uh, that's my, 
<laughs> thinking. There's there's something to be said for the smaller packaging, but there's also something to be said for the the nicer stuff or just even a more consistent look across the board. Yeah, that too. Uh, just like when my Fury from the Deep uh, DVD came, um, you know, naturally I watched it, but then when I put it back on the shelf, there's my little, you know, fan created uh, cover from like I printed off like literally 20 years ago uh, that has the same spine as the rest of the DVDs. And that went on in its place just so it wouldn't stand you out as much. You, sir, are a fan. I am a fan, Warren. I With am. all that implies. Yep. I, I, I will accept that. One of these one of these days I need to watch Fury. I have I've yet to, to crack the plastic. It's good. I watched it. I'm I'm listen, I'm impressed with myself. I'm I, you know, cuz I'm like you sometimes cuz where is my thing? Give it to me and then I just don't watch it for a little mm. bit, but I said no, I'm not going to be that. I'm not going to be that person anymore. And so I watched uh, all of Fury like within a couple of days of buying the the of the DVD arriving. So, yeah, it's good. You should do it. Um, there's also, uh, eventually, yeah, Phantom Films, uh, has p- put out a whole bunch of stuff, uh, around the, um, the season eight Blu-ray stuff and, and things. I think we've referred to it once or twice in the past couple of weeks, but, uh, there's the full season eight Blu-ray preview with Chris Chapman. It's about 46 minutes long. Links in the show notes. I'm not watching this yet because, you know, it's not coming here for another three months. So I don't, <laughs> I don't want to be spoiled, so to speak. I, I, I've watched the first third or first half or something like that uh-huh. um and there's there's talk about like how uh COVID affected production yeah. which is kind of interesting and uh according according to chapman um stuff that stuff that was supposed to be produced in like late march uh that didn't actually happen got remounted in the like october-ish time frame uh he said uh ended up being he thought anyway a lot better than what would have been produced if if lockdown etc hadn't mm. occurred in March. Interesting. So I don't know if that's because they had more time to, you know, again fine tune or rejigger or whatever. But uh, um, maybe it was a blessing in disguise. <laughs> yeah, COVID helps production of Doctor Who Blu-ray. That's uh, that, that's your headline right there. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to save that. I'm going to save it and watch it until like maybe a couple of days. Like when, once I see that the uh, the shipment has happened from Amazon, I think, okay, now I'll watch this. Now that I know I have something to genuinely look forward to when I watch this thing in June, um, then that's when I'll watch this thing because Chris Chapman's a nice fellow. So and I look forward mm-hmm. to hearing what he says about stuff when it comes to this. Um, speaking of uh, animations, we were talking about Fury from the Deep. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the Doctor Who, uh, what, the figure collection from, what, Eagle Moss. Um, a new one's coming out, uh, issue 193 is coming out, with a figurine of the animated chameleon from the Faceless Ones. And on the back, on the blurb, talking about this, they sort of maybe mentioned that they are also in the works animating Evil of the Daleks and Abominable Snowman as well. So, interesting. Yep. I mean, this is not at all surprising. Not surprising, I mean, no. No. And good, I'm all for it. Yeah. And the it's like, it reminds me of um, back when the DVD range wasn't yet complete mm-hmm. and there'd be announcements of stories, whatever stories, and we'd get, you know, a little excited about the upcoming release and whatever. But at the back, in the back of our minds, we're like, well, everything's going to come out eventually. Yeah. And f- with the, the, you know, Blu-ray season push and all that kind of stuff, it's not that big of a logical leap to realize that Abominable Snowman, Evil of the Daleks, Highlanders, Space Pirates, whatever, Space Pirates. is probably going to get a- animated for, for the release. <laughs> Milo Clancy in animated form. Oh my God, I can't wait for the Space Pirates to come out animated. Well, See, unless I've we never watched it. the Faceless Ones, so I saw this thing, I'm like, what the hell is this They Live nonsense? What is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> kind of is, actually, yeah. Now I kind of uh, want to watch the Faceless Ones of these crazy gown nonsense monsters are going to be in it. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good faceless ones. Um uh well, yeah. I as I, I mean, I I think it was we referenced an earlier clip of Chris Chapman talking about it, you know, how he basically kind of alluded to, you know, when the animations are all done for like say season 4 because they are almost done for season 4. Yeah, probably the Blu-ray will come out and it will feature the animated versions of them. Um, but that doesn't stop me from demanding my Fury from the Deep DVD to arrive so I can just buy the Blu-ray version of it in a year's time or something like that. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, with, um, 
So I'd, for, <laughs> I'd forgotten about it, but Web of Fear, uh-huh. uh, episode three was previously announced as, as coming out in an in, in animated form. So That's right. So with Abominable Snowman on the docket, that leaves only Wheel in Space for season five. Yeah. And then season four has got a little more work than that to go. Season four has Highlanders. Uh, let's think here. They've done Macra. They've Smugglers. done- They've done smugglers, smugglers and highlanders. So the two historicals, basically, yeah. everyone and loves e- historicals. And, e- and evil the Daleks. Now that it's been announced, you know, yeah, we e- want to factor that in. Yeah. So season four and season five, and then really season six is already done, apart from space pirates. So you could all have all yeah. the Trouton, and then you just have to wait for that ship in the Suez Canal to get out of the way, so we can get all the missing episodes back uh, that were stuck there in the first place for the season <laughs> yes. three Hartnell. <laughs> That's exactly how it's been working. Because <laughs> they've just been sitting there thinking, yeah, we've got all these film cans. Literally, there's a ship full of Daleks Master Plan just sitting there. Mm-hmm. And this giant ship in this West Canal is blocking it. Philip Morris and Ian Levine are both fighting on that ship. That's why it's not moving. Because yeah. nobody has the controls. Because those two are trying to control it. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're fighting about more things and more people. In are Star fi- Trek outfits. Yeah. <laughs> Old school <laughs> Star Trek <laughs> outfits. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, exactly. So... Anyway, uh, animation stuff in the world. What I also like about this, I'm going to mention this about Fear from the Deep, is that they also have brand new Telesnap recons as well, which I also like a lot. So, you know, once again, the the, the Doctor Who DVD and Blu-ray team, like they say, okay, well, the, a story's missing. Guess what? We'll animate it. Guess what? We'll animate it in color too for those of you that guess what? We'll also put a Telesnap version of it as well, all in the same <laughs> release. Uh, I don't, I don't give much credit to the underwater menace telestamp reconstruction because it's pretty terrible. They were told but to make it terrible. That's the weird I thing. I know they were told to make it yeah. terrible. But uh, like it's for, for a certain segment of fandom, I mean, our, our first exposure to galaxy four Highlanders, whatever is yeah. going to be recons. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's kind of cool that they're continuing that tradition. Um, and it's, it's not that, many people who would actually care about it, I'm sure. But no. uh, I was just kind of trying to think, like, outside of Doctor Who, mm-hmm. um, I don't know how big telesnaps were back in the 60s in general, but I are, are there, like, other series where they do telesnap recons as... Well, it was a regulation thing. Oh, uh, I don't... Um, I'm trying to think, because... Like, you had to take pictures as you went so you could report it. It was kind of like the CRTC tapes we had. Uh, in, no, in not, not the, not the no? telesnap. Okay. They were an actual... They were an, uh, John Kira was provided a service, basically, and, and a lot of oh, people did, right. just because that was the only way of record keeping. But, I mean, it was a choice. Like, you know, famously, John Wiles, the producer after Verity Lambert and before Ennis Lloyd, like says, ah, this is, this is money that's worth spending somewhere else. So he never, he never commissioned Telesnap. So this is what makes the John Wiles era so mysterious. Cause there's no, there's, you know, there's no visual record for a lot of stories about how they looked on screen. There's, you know, there's uh, press photos and stuff like the massacre and stuff like that, but there's not a second of, uh, of actual visual footage of the massacre available because of that, because John Wiles was, was cheap. Um, so, uh, and then John Kira died in 1968 and, uh, thus the, um, that, that whole thing stopped. So if there are other shows from the sixties that no longer exist, like, I don't know what the Avengers, does the Avengers have telesnaps? I don't know. Um, no. a clue. Because there are some missing episodes from there. There's uh, the, the show United, which Jerry Davis uh, wrote. It was a is a soap opera about the Manchester United football team. I think it's 167 episodes or something of that. None exist, and but I know that happened. The Avengers is all on film, right? So you could restore it, and it would look fantastic today. Well, the, uh, uh, to to sort of refer to Baldrick uh, talking about rewriting um, Robert Johnson's dictionary, uh, you know. Uh, we'd have to make new pages, Warren, in order to make mm. that new dictionary that they burnt. I so no, yes. they couldn't redo a film that no longer exists. Well, well, but you know, who needs that when you have the 2000 film? <laughs> Did it come out in 2000, that uh, Ray Fiennes? Something Uma like Thurman that. One? It was bad, as I recall. I never <laughs> watched it. Yeah, but... Maybe the 90s, I don't remember. I don't know either. Had a lot of CG, it didn't need to be there. No, so... So to answer your question, Chris, I, I don't know uh, what other things exist only as Telus. Out of the unknown. Are there any out, out of the unknown fans out there that uh, that uh, have missing episodes as Telesnaps? I'm not sure. 
See that that whole story um, reminds me a very tangential story mm-hmm. here of when um, they were going to re-release Titanic and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson messaged James Cameron and said, "Listen, um, the stars are in the wrong position for that day in that position in that part of the world." And James Cameron messaged back, uh, "Only seven people in the world care about that, but I'm one of them, so I'm changing that." <laughs> so, <laughs> I kind of like that actually. So he actually went to the point of changed it as per Neil deGrasse Tyson's specifications as to where the stars should be at that time during that you know period wow in that location nerd that's dedication that say what dedication. you will about james cameron and there's plenty to say but he did do that to please the nerds of which he was yep. one to please a specific nerd and <laughs> others, including himself that's what happens yeah. that's what happens when canadians get rich they just like you don't want to be they want to please everyone <laughs> they do yeah really i don't think do. james cameron and please everyone are two <laughs> phrases that have gone together all that <laughs> no. much I mean, he's just pleasing everyone by making four new uh, Avatar films, apparently. So, uh, uh, yeah, we'll, that's uh, the best hooray. way to do it. Yeah, uh, let's uh, let's wrap up this news section with uh, some big finish stuff. Um, we already mentioned the Ninth Doctor stuff coming out. Uh, there's 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 possibly more coming out this week. Uh, dot dot dot. Um, uh, there's a new there's a new Philip Hinchcliffe um, uh, st- uh, <laughs> suggested. Story. He came up with the story, and, and Mark Platt wrote it out. But it's called the uh, the God of Phantoms. It's coming out in August of 2021. Um, a Tom Baker story, of course, cause you know, Tom Baker. Uh, so that's, that's happening in August. Um, there's also, they also announced fourth doctor adventures coming out through 2022 and 2023, uh, which is crazy, including peak season by our friend Elizabeth Miles. Liz wrote words that Tom Baker said as doctor who in a big finish. Madness. Play. Very Madness. cool. Very cool. So uh, that you too, can, yes. You can pre-order uh, those as well, and then uh, uh, the the monthly Torchwood uh, audio um, is uh, coming out in J- uh, July twenty twenty one. Madam I'm featuring Dervla Kerwin, who is in um, the uh, next Doctor uh, as Norton's as the boss, Elizabeth Hayho. I wonder if that is a tribute to Elizabeth Miles and Margot Hayho. Perhaps thinking that's probably an in joke. But I might be wrong, but all those stuff, all that stuff rather is, uh, available for pre-order at the big finish website. All right. Um, that's it folks. Uh, after the break, yep, we're doing this. Speaking of Torchwood, we're dipping back, dipping back for the first time in several years to watch Torchwood. Watch along with us. Won't you with episode one, everything changes. Welcome back, folks. Uh, I can't believe we're doing this, everyone. Torchwood <laughs> revisited the uh, this. I don't know how. So January first, two thousand seven, is when Torchwood first premiered. Mm-hmm. So we are looking at uh, about what fourteen years ago now that this uh, show has uh, has first aired. Um, I don't think any of us have seen. Any of these episodes since no, perhaps 2007, not. with perhaps the odd exception here or there. Mm, uh, no, I've, I've watched most, not all, definitely not all, but most right. at some point since. Right. Like long, because and, Kat, and I'm talking like since, since like Miracle Day. <laughs> right. So like 2009. Because, you know, Cat, there are people no, no, like Cat. Since Kat. Miracle Day. Who if uh, who has oh right not uh, children of Earth um, uh, Cat came to Doctor Who via Torchwood. Uh, yeah, it, it, yeah. it's quite fascinating. I'm sure she's not the only one. Well, her uh, her, sto- her story to, that just to tell it because uh, yeah, yeah. because she I don't know she's told it before probably mm-hmm. even on this show. Um, so she was into Queer as Folk, the Russell C Davis version of Queer as Folk, and heard about Torchwood uh, as a result of RTD, and then started watching Torchwood, and then backpedaled into into Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, and it, uh, Torchwood seems to just sort of be on this show, certainly the, um, the, the forgotten stepchild, perhaps we'll say of Red-headed? Doctor Who. We'll see. Yeah. We, we reviewed it at the time, I believe perhaps lackadaisically. Then, uh, Torchwood Children uh, of Earth came along and we thought it was un- commonly amazing but of course it aired o- over five nights in one week. So we mm-hmm. had one episode to talk about it and that was it. So this is us. Sight unseen for the better part of 14 years, uh, we're going to watch Torchwood season one over the next uh, 13 weeks. 
on this here podcast, folks. I, I Usually I like to dive in and like, let's watch things and look for things. No, I'm going in cold. I imagine <laughs> the two of you are as well. Yep. Um, until until this, Cyber Woman, when everyone gets warm. <laughs> uncomfortably warm. Uh, I, I thought earlier today, I'm like, oh, Chris is going to say some uncomfortable things throughout this series. <laughs> yeah. And here we are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to, as we'll get to, you got a pterodactyl versus barbecue sauce. I mean, come <laughs> on. Uh, you, you, you might have a point here. All right. You might have a point. <laughs> and chibbers. Good old chibbers. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. There's RT, there's Captain Jack, there's all the Torchwood crew. There's HD. This was HD two years before Doctor Who was. That is a crime. Uh, I'm that still annoyed about that. Yeah, well, uh, it's, it's also it's a kind test of, bed for, for HD for Doctor Who. Yeah, it good was. Point. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to do this now. Uh, Torchwood Season 1, Episode 1, Everything Changes. Don't cue it up to Day 1, which is what you would automatically think, because that's not Episode 1, that's Episode 2. Nope. Uh, so Episode 1 is Everything Changes. I assume you all have your legally purchased Oh, so Blu-rays. extra legally. Yes, uh, DVDs. Uh, v- I think it came out on VHS, probably. Um, good, you have them all <laughs> queued up. Not. It did not. I, thank you. Uh, here we go, then, everyone. We're doing this. Torchwood. Everything changes in three, two, one. Play. Having bought the DVDs of season one and season two for sure, mm-hmm. I think that's as far as I went. Uh, I it, it will periodically look at uh, Blu-ray options for like the entire run. And they're still idiotically expensive in Canada. They are a bit. I bought, I did buy the Blu-ray set, which contains the first three series. It does not contain Miracle uh, a Miracle Day. I was going to say Miracle on Ice. It doesn't mm. contain that either. <laughs> that would be interesting if it did. Yeah. I got to say, just looking at that cast list right at the top there, that's a pretty mm-hmm. damn good cast, even if this is a silly show. Uh, yeah. I think I've come to, you know, I don't know what we were thinking at the time, um, what we were going to be expecting. Do you see Andy? Um, you know, like, is it going to be like, you know, torch for a doctor who for grown ups, which is what sort of the unflattering eh. sober K, yeah. which was passed around that, uh, RTD was very upset with. Um, like, I'm not sure there was a call for it, <laughs> you know, like, were we crying out for really. th- this approach to, and so at the time, I think I kind of chided it. And now that time has passed a little bit, um. I, I do remember at the time, and I'm thinking right now, we're watching sort of um, <laughs> apology, apologies for the slightly low quality of uh, Blu-ray rips we're watching here, fellas. But uh, the you could you could still see that the slight um, aspect of you know the 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 filmization is not oh, quite yeah. there. Like it's got that BBC mid two thousands glow <laughs> happening, just it's like Rose did. <laughs> It's just, it's just almost like, is, are we on videotape? Are we on OB location videotape here, you know? Well, this is almost certainly shot in, yeah, on video. It is, but like, it, it looks it. That's the thing. You look at yeah, stuff today and it's like, you know. Oh, no, no. Well, I mean, yeah. digital, it's, yeah, I guess technically it's video if you get right down to it, but it's, mm-hmm. if you're shooting on like Cook lenses, like the current season yeah. of Doctor Who is, it doesn't make it, with 13 stops yeah. of, of, of of dynamic range, like you might as yeah. well be shooting on film. I know film <laughs> purists out there be like, no, it's blah, blah, blah. Yes, okay, but the, the gap has narrowed so significantly. This gap is a lot wider. Are you talking about the bad. gap? In- it looks <laughs> fine once you accept it. Is, oh, I thought you meant gap in uh, Eve Miles' teeth. We're uh, recording this uh, uh, still in 2020. Uh, yeah. Uh, the year of our COVID 2020. Uh, <laughs> and just watching Gwen give, you know, watching two people share a cup of coffee just seems such a strange concept <laughs> still. Yeah. We also had our first uh, on on air uh, F bomb uh, in Doctor Who universe history there. Mm. Um, they they might drop f bombs <laughs> and stuff on the TV show. We will not be doing so here, nor will there be nudity. But I don't think there was much nudity on the actual. <laughs> we will not be doing either. any nudity either. No, or are we? No. Oh, good old Thanos. Hmm. <laughs> I remember seeing this clip on uh, on the the uh, what you call it. Probably Paul like the one show. Sh- the one show is Apollo Grady. Is that what I it was? Don't, I don't no. Know. You got them all archived, you would know. Actually, I might. <laughs> you know what else is great about this? Her using her presumably Windows CE phone. <laughs> it could be a Palm based yeah. product. And in another 2020 yeah. irony, now everything's based on a Palm product, really. Yeah. I mean, isn't ARM what Palm used? 
It's one gingered corpse. Yeah. This this glove comes back. Don't yeah. add us. As I said, we haven't watched this in like a, any decade and a half. So uh, I know it comes back, I think, in season two, doesn't it? I think Which so. Which I have very foggy back, memories yes. of. Yeah, I have well, very can, foggy on season does two. Doesn't come back in, in the season when they, uh, for that one? Susie comes back. Spoilers. They keep killing Susie, which was uh, known as a different episode in the in the initial listing. Because uh, I don't they, remember they if changed... it's any good. It's a good title though. Well, it's a good title. It's called something else, obviously, because they didn't want to spoil the fact that uh, the, I, the I find it amazing that uh, Indira Varma there, who's gone on to a lot of great things, including Game of Thrones, um, was in the opening titles in all the cast shots. Like she is set up to be mm-hmm. part of the main cast, and she gets and then killed at the end gets of this. Off, yeah, yeah. Who did she play in I, Game of Thrones? I don't remember. She played the, um, you know, like the Sand Sisters. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Their, their mother slash, I don't know who it was. She was the wife of um, uh, Alexander Siddig in, um, in- There's another guy who has Paul McGann syndrome. I, he's gotten better looking as he's gotten older. Mm. Yeah. Oh, God, I know he's dreamy, isn't he? Yeah. So is John, ba- actually, no, John Barham is, is fairly handsome right here. Not to say yeah, he's not looks about the same. I mean, he's yeah. a little- He's so had does, a little work done, you could tell now, but not yeah. much. So does Gareth no. David Lloyd, for that matter, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we won't have seen uh, Captain Jack in Revelation of the Daleks, as this, even though this is coming out in, like, March. We haven't even seen it yet. As we're Revolution of the Daleks. Revelation of the Daleks in our story entirely. That's true. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember seeing Captain Jack in that one, either. No. Well, that's what video is for. <laughs> yeah. So Bird Gorman also scoping in. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Bird Gorman also showed up in uh, in Game of Thrones too. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right, he did. Yeah, yeah. He was a right bastard in that. Sorry about the he swearing. He was. But... That's not. Well, I think it's allowed. Um, ah, Captain Jack's got the. He's got the shin. <laughs> I mean, th- th- you know, take your pick in Game of Thrones. <laughs> like, yeah, there's, there's a lot to. That's like a buffet of bastardry. So it, yeah. I read, I read somewhere somebody made the point that, that this show was such a big deal and now we just kind of forgot about it. What, Torch That's how bad the last season was. Oh, Game of Thrones, you mean, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I blame cynicism. You can't, uh, you can't any, end anything uh, satisfactorily in uh, post-2016, it seems. Well, like, they I think, certainly didn't. So. No, I think Mad Men was like maybe the last uh, finale that people think, oh, wow, that was great. Wow, I've geez. never watched the final season of Mad Men. I watched everything up to it and I just kind of, oh. I don't care anymore. Yeah, I never, I never watched mm-hmm. any of it, but... That's an enjoyable enough show. I don't mm. ever think it got the. I, I don't think it ever deserved the praise it got. It was, it was not the be all and end all. It was a remarkable reproduction of the sixties. I'll give it that. Oh God, yes, absolutely, yes. Just like this is a marvelous reproduction of Wales, circa two thousand six. Yeah, because it is Wales. Circa <laughs> uh-huh. What is this weird drifting camera? It looks like the couch is actually traveling up in a music video kind of. Way. <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about, I mean, I watch uh, TV and stuff as I'm sure the two of you do. And like there's the, the thing now is to constantly have that, like it, you can't just have a static camera. Star Trek Discovery does this a lot where you just like the camera just ever so slightly yes, is tracking. Yes, I agree. It's annoying as hell. It is annoying. It's it's like we need to create some motion here. Otherwise, it's going to be boring. Abrams does that too. That's, that's an Abramsism. Like is the it? Star Trek okay. films in particular are bad for that. But also the two Star Wars movies he did have a way too much camera movement that doesn't need to be there. It's uh, it's interesting because as as we date this to December 2020, you know, we watch uh, Discovery and Mandalorian back to back, depending on the order. It doesn't matter, but uh, you know, Mandalorian like that that camera is stay with it's on a tripod. It's locked in because it's basically remaking spaghetti westerns, whereas Which Discovery I'm fine is with. yeah, with Discovery is a lot more actiony, I guess. Well, the thing is, when Star Wars goes back to its root, to its roots, it works, and you can't do that Star Trek because no. its roots are complete cheeseball '60s stuff, which was great at the time, but is you couldn't do it now. Uh, yeah, I'd say as the evidenced roots. by the Star Trek, um, like the Enterprise, that's supposedly right before Kirk's Enterprise, where they have to gussy it up a bit, or people will just give up on it. Well, yeah, I'm just just camera styles. I mean, you know, the the middle four, the you mm-hmm. know TNG, DS9, Voyager, and Enterprise are all basically shot the same way. But when you watch it, you don't care. You're just like, oh, no. okay. It seems comfortable in a way, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm not too sure what uh, what what we're looking at here when it comes to uh, shooting style, but uh, <laughs> probably not that far from Doctor Who, to be honest. But 
like especially we do watch like two thousand like you know season two <laughs> Do- Doctor Who. Sorry, this reminds uh, me of us going to Derby, Stephen. <laughs> Or at least what we thought would happen when we got off the train. Yes. It was a bunch of singing <laughs> Scottish soccer hooligans. Yeah. And we're like, ah, we're Canadian. Let's be quiet and skulk. Can we just leave, please? Go, Meanwhile, go watch your your... American wife was like, get out of my way, America. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go watch your kickball match. RTD does great introductory episodes. I, you know, th- usually through the lens of a. Uh, of a new character to the mm-hmm. proceedings, you know, like yeah. Martha's introduction is great. Mm-hmm. In addition to Rose's, yeah, Rose mm-hmm. actually Donna's they, is great too. Mm-hmm. It is any new you companion. Know? You're right. Yeah, I'm just agreeing with you basically. Yeah, we see it through their eyes. You know, like we, we like yeah, it was fascinating because we already know. Like if you're watching Doctor Who up to this point, you know who Captain Jack is already. Um, but we still see this through the eyes of uh, of Gwen. This is kind but of very also, much like, uh huh. There are people who got like, for instance, Cat, uh, but many That's others I'm sure who just yep. got into it like this, and this makes perfect mm-hmm. sense. Assuming you know, you don't okay, you watch this because you heard about Doctor Who or you like Doctor Who or whatever, but you haven't necessarily seen it recently. So yeah, this this I'm just watching this now, like for the first time in a year and uh, ten years at least, uh, and this kind of reminds me of basically a mirror of. I saw this scene on the uh, talk, show, talk shows too, mm-hmm. of Rose wandering in the basement of the store and then gets threatened by an auton. We're kind of ah, watching yeah. the the PG thirteen, well maybe the MA uh, version because of all the blood and gore that's about to happen because Torchwood. Hmm. And Paul Casey gets to cash another paycheck for this. That's true. That's got to be him, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> you seem sure you recognize that gate anywhere, do you? <laughs> no, I'm just pretty sure he played all the baddies or his primary baddie anyway. Oh God, that means we've got to watch the Fight Club one with the Weevils. Yeah, I know. That's oh, a dear. 10 weeks Clark time one. or something. Yeah, and you are correct. It is Paul Casey. Weevils, that's right. So they they live here. They They come through the rift. I'd mm-hmm. forgotten about the Weevils. Yeah. Although I do remember second season when Burn Gorman's mm-hmm. basically dead uh, and he barfs out his insides upside down and Captain Jack goes, that's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Season two that also brought us meat. Uh, meat is not. Oh, good. right. Well, who knows? Meat. The thing is, that's, I've said that about a bunch of different that's... Matt Smith episodes and I watched uh, them again with the luxury of time and I'm like oh these aren't as bad as I remember them being mm-hmm. I enjoy I enjoyed Meat when it first came out as I recall and uh, <laughs> uh, up, up until watching this uh-huh. uh, coincidentally or not Meat was the last tortured episode I watched wow a few years ago or a couple of years what? ago <laughs> really you just thought okay we've seen the best no need for the rest uh, I think it was probably just an exploration of is it as bad as people say oh kind of thing He's going to get killed, but not like off screen, like happened in Rose. This is how you know it's for adults. Yeah. Just like when, um, Owen goes to the bar and picks up the, the man and the woman with the, the yeah. pheromone spray. Yeah. That's, that's how you know it's for adults. <laughs> that is I was like, thinking about that today, but how like in 2020, that's like, well, yeah. And so he's kissing a lady and he's kissing a boy. What's the big uh, deal? Yeah, I know. But that in then, 2005, we're like, oh, what, what, what a frivolity! And now we're like, yeah, mm, that's a night out, I guess, yeah. or whatever. Uh, I remember the knock yourself um, out, burn. Speaking speaking of that that subject matter, mm-hmm. I remember in was the Greeks bearing gifts episode seven, Goodness. six, whatever seven. Um, look look Tosh at the torchwood ha- expert having, here, guys. Tosh having her uh, um, woman on woman dalliance. Oh right. Oh, was that in? Oh, wait. Everyone has one next week, though, in the sex alien episode. Um, because it's the sex aliens. That's how you can tell the torture is being made by 13 year olds because. <laughs> <laughs> and RTD. The first thing they can think to do is what if there is a woman and she is sex gassed and she has to so, have sex with everyone? So, so, so right after uh, Chris Chibnall uh, admonished Pip and Jane Bakery, walked right over the Torchwood set somehow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> direct, and wrote, the, here's my script. It's about sex gas. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and here's my second script. It's about a mostly naked cyber lady. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad he got the, all that out of his system and then get to Doctor Who. I suppose. Especially with the Lady Doctor Who. Yeah. That's the last I, thing we need happening. It, 
It's uh, it's fast. It's even fascinating. Like you know, he had like these weird thin glasses on around 2006. You could see him on the DVD extras. Like, good God, it looked like from the mid 90s or something. It's just uh, ah, uh, the olden days. Olden days. You're referencing uh, uh, Doctor Who here. Mm-hmm. Oh, are they? Oh, the ghosts? No, what? No, no. Talking about Jack Harkness disappearing at the height of the Blitz. Ah, the, the Blitz, yeah. I get you. Dr. Dances. So, Dr. Dances. Refer- hey, we were there. We were there. We Chris, were, did you we ever were make definitely it- there. Yeah, did you ever make it to Wales? I know you, uh, during no. when you lived there. Never? Damn. No, I never did. Uh, oh. When I was on vacation to the UK last uh, two, well, there were plans to go see the Doctor Who exhibition, but uh, it didn't right. didn't work out. Okay, Bern Gurman's you- jeans are ridiculously tight. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like, ostentatiously so. Well, when you're Bern Gorman. I suppose that's true. Burn Pacific Rim Gorman. Yeah. So there's mm-hmm. the uh, there's the, there's Millennium Plaza. There's that. Mm-hmm. That was being worked on. I think there was like there was like wood um, platforms on it when we were there in 2015. I I, I I just find it personally amusing that we have a shot of a, me walking like a robot past that giant thing. <laughs> I know. Just because why not? Because what else would you do? Why why else would you come to Cardiff ex- except to make a a silly fan film? I'm pretty sure the entire population of Cardiff disagrees with that notion, but okay. Yeah. It is pretty much what Torchwood is, I suppose, in its first season. But uh... Speaking So of in things. behind, in behind where Gwen is, I think is about where the location of the now closed uh, burger joint is that uh Oh yeah. That, that they shot um many a Doctor Who episode in. So that means they're they're actually standing uh near the soon to become uh what's his name? Uh Memorial. Uh, yes, Yantos is just down. Yeah, just uh, past where they're standing right now, in between them and down the the steps. But it doesn't there. exist yeah. yet because that character hasn't died yet. Obviously, I find not. it hilarious that that thing is still there. Ten years, later. it's still there. It's astounding the longevity of that memorial. It's that is it's, British uh, <laughs> um, eccentricity writ large. Yeah, <laughs> especially for like a you know. Uh, so I was going to say like a, a you know third third tier kind of thing, but. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's it, it bears repeating that Torchwood as a show started on BBC Three, went to BBC Two, and then to BBC One, which yeah. is practically unheard of. It's like you know, like a, like going from single A ball to double A to triple A, you know, to the bigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in like successive seasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Children of Earth is friggin' fantastic. So I it's mean, amazing. Fair yeah. God, when we so yeah, the the plan is, folks. By the way, that uh, we'll be doing like season two sometime in twenty twenty two. So two years hence, we'll be doing uh, Miracle Day. I mean, um, Children, Children of, Earth, of Earth, which which I'm I'm s- both looking forward to and kind of like fearing. Because... Yeah, what if it isn't as good as I remember it? <laughs> oh no, it's good. It's <laughs> it believe me, it's you, just it's, harrowing. Have, it's harrowing. That's all. I know, Stephen. I know you've watched uh, Children of Earth once at some once point, more. at some point I, since. I watched it in preparation for the Calgary Expo panel with John Barrowman, Eve Miles, and Gareth David Lloyd in 2011, okay. I think it was. Yeah. And that's uh, it. 20, I've watched it twice. That's it. 2013? Yeah. Maybe yeah. I did watch it a third time. Oh, man. I'm forgetting yeah. now, but. I don't know. I've, I've watched it uh, once since mm-hmm. I've watched. Um, so back a little while ago, as this goes out, uh, during like the lockdown stuff, um, and whatever, there were those, um, kind of like, uh, Dr. Who and whatever super cuts, uh, right. where they'd have like a compressed runtime for the, the whole episode. Uh, and there, did somebody did a, the, the BBC did a, a super cut for children of earth. That was, I don't know, whatever, 30 or 40 or 50 minutes long. I watched the first few minutes of that some months ago as this mm-hmm. goes out, but, uh, I haven't watched, uh, definitely haven't watched the whole thing since. I don't know. Got to be 10 years or near enough. Skyrunning Netscape Navigator? What's going on here? You might be. 2007 went, uh, or 2006. I don't think Netscape was still going concerning yeah. you, man. This aired January 1st, 2007. 2.4 million viewers on BBC3. Just to give you an indication of the times. I think, oh, I think that's it. That's that's where the shrine is, isn't it? Isn't mm-hmm. that the shrine right yeah, now? Yeah. 2.4 million on BBC3 seems like ginormous 
a ton Just nowadays. Enormous. Like you get double that on BBC One, and it's like the top viewing figures of the day, basically. There's Darth Davaloid right there. His first appearance. I forgot that he uh, didn't show up. He was he does go on away missions. He's the O'Brien. I could just hear some sort of magical kind of uh, music. I think does Murray Gold in the music? I know he did the theme song. Um, no, no. It, it increasingly becomes like uh, other people, like maybe Blair Mowat or someone. Um, or no, Sam Watts never worked on this. He worked on Sarah Jane, but uh, yeah, and uh, was just versus aliens. That's right. Yeah, I know Murray Gold did the the theme song, the ten second theme song for Torchwood, which. Uh, uh, yeah, just the Wikipedia entry just lists Ben Foster, Murray Gold, and Blair Mowat as composers. Okay. So I'm, they probably you know each contributed in their own way, but I, I want to say Blair Mowat did the most. Mm hmm. Because Murray Gold is busy doing Doctor Who, so they must have shot this after season two. Um, because I think this inhabited the same studio space as the TARDIS set, I believe. Yeah, they were side by side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I I can't remember which um I think they tore down the TARDIS set. I mean this Torchwood set after and it became like the new TARDIS set, I think, or something. I can't remember what they I know that I know that something iconic replaced the the Torchwood set in in the studio. And it might have been um, Matt Smith's first TARDIS set. I could be wrong about that, but that's an impressive set. Like, holy crap, like multi-layers, which always impresses me. Hmm. I guess I'm going to take that back. Blair Mode actually doesn't, on IMDb, doesn't have any Torchwood credits. Well. He's got a heated class, but... I knew he did class. Yeah, I think oh, I think maybe he did some uncredited stuff on Torchwood. He perhaps. He's got some like uh, uncredited Doctor Who stuff, like Deep Breath. Yeah. Seeing this in Doctor Who was very uh -huh. strange. It was weird, isn't it? Because you know they swear and stop it it's like are they gonna swear here this is i was Dr. waiting Who. for it in stolen earth i'm like Whoa. yeah look they're wacky uh, they're wacky hmm. investigators yeah <laughs> so yeah it's foster and gold mm -hmm. it was oh wow how about that what about even for oh i suppose charles and Earth. i know he didn't do music for maybe he did music for mm -hmm. miracle day i don't know they had somebody else come in in season four Stu kennedy Oh, I don't know who that but, is. Uh, That's the stars element of things, I suppose. <laughs> he says a bad word. <laughs> Rude. Jubilee pizza. Yes. An American feast pizza. Yeah. Rob Shearman gets, uh, it just got paid 50 pounds right now just for us watching this episode. Because <laughs> of Jubilee? Pretty sure that's not Probably Jubilee. Not. Yeah. Probably not. You know, it's a reference. That is the reference. That's why it's is called it really? Jubilee pizza. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. That that much I know and remember. I also like the, the uh, Torchwood logo with the uh, serif font. Mm -hmm. In the disused station for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't there another, like there's what, been five of them and the, one of them they can't find? I can't remember how that all worked out. I think so. You might be confusing that with Babylon 5, but... Um... No, I don't think <laughs> I am. Oh. No, because Torchwood... Torchwood was London and got wiped out. This is Torchwood yeah. 3. Torchwood 2 disappeared or? Yeah, I think Torchwood 2 disappeared, it? yeah. And then where's and then there's 4 and 5 or is this just something three? like that? I don't remember. They're trying to uh, establish the um, lucrative novelization market, I assume. <laughs> yeah, but so what happened to 2? Who knows, but maybe an audio series could figure this one out. Look, four LCDs stapled together. Modern. <laughs> I bet you those are just plastic sheets. Oh sheet. yeah. Apparently Torchwood Four is one that disappeared and that gets mentioned here in this in this episode. Oh well. Maybe maybe preparing it. There we go. There's Terry. <laughs> Pterodactyl. Nice work. My fan way. 
A fan, but that's right. Which always screwed me up because a friend of mine's got that name. <laughs> <laughs> also, I told her about it. She's like, shut up. That's weird. Huh? Right. Also, if you're a fan of Little Britain, it gets confusing as well. My fan way. I'm impressed uh, by these weevils. I seem to recall at the time going, they're giving a little too much time to these guys, and I don't think I was wrong. It's all, Although it's, I do like these Sansa Lamb's cage they've got for this. But the, yeah. si- but the silk pajamas, man. <laughs> He looks, the, you know, the weevils are kind of like Torchwood Slothine at this point. They're like, oh, this is going to turn up every single week. Look out. Well, we I'll got take these over aliens. Slothine. Yeah. It, cre- it feels weird to see Captain Jack in the rare, like what? Like I'm thinking Boomtown and um, the two part finale that he actually is not in his World War II costume because. This is Captain Jack. You know. well, plus, when he shows up at Doctor Who, he goes out of his way to be over the top, which makes sense given the special yeah. guest star appearance. But here he's not as much over the top, so it's weird. I, yeah, that's true because he's the lead. Um, I've I've often spoken highly of John Barrowman because he knows his place uh, and, his, and his character knows his place. Mm-hmm. And that when he's on Doctor Who, he's he is John Barrowman and Captain Jack, but he knows that he's never going to upstage the doctor you know and here it almost like now i'm responsible i need i need to lead this show so i can't quite be you know i he is basically the you know the blake in blake seven he who's kind of the straight down the middle hero and everyone else is the uh the eccentrics you know around compared to which uh, you know they compare them to him it's an interesting character captain jack Much more than I thought he would be, to be honest. But I wonder how interesting he'll be in Revolution of the Daleks. I say after having seen it. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. At the time we will have watched out. it. We'll probably have had a commentary for it already. Uh, mm-hmm. But this is the timey wimey nature of uh, of these days. Hey, we might be vaccinated by by the time this goes. Up, <laughs> That's else. a good one. Yeah. Ah. Oh, Jack, you charmer. Ah. I'm surprised he didn't make a crack about his butt and how nice it is to look at or something. <laughs> <laughs> crack. Butt. Oh, okay. I hadn't <laughs> made that mental leap. <laughs> and by leap, I mean descent. Well, I, I, I still... And then, like, this goes back to uh, um, The uh, Empty Child. I, just, I, just, I love Jack's, like, self-assuredness and and and, you know, how... You know, he's like, he's like King Poop. Uh-huh. There should be guardrailings on that, though. It has to be said. Well, uh, is this modeled after the Star Wars universe? Because if it's modeled after Star s- Wars, then... <laughs> I was going to say. I mean, yeah, sure, has just... Nightmare is, is the Star yeah. Wars universe. Mm. Open reactor shafts everywhere you look. Mm-hmm. This feels like the one Doctor Who location that I actually have a passing familiarity with the geography of well walking down it happened down it a few times i know well we were only there yeah we were only there for an hour or so but ah good old perception filter i had one of those in college this is basically ripped off of (laughs) douglas adams idea of scp which is someone else's problem Mm. this is in i think their third hitchhiker book yeah, it's. Fa- I only read the books like maybe one. No, I listened to the audio play once. I think I read the books, but of course I've watched the TV show endless times and it ends before that bit. But The TV show is superior, but I just recently, because it's my girlfriend's 42nd birthday, so we watched the movie version of Hedrick's Guide. And it, it's not as bad as everybody says it is. It's not perfect, but it's not as bad no. as everybody says it is. It's I got to give it another shot. I have to give that one another shot. St- Stephen, Stephen Fry is Marvin. Is yeah. Oh, yeah, ge- yeah. Genius cast. No, Alan Rickman is Marvin, and he's- Or Alan yeah. Rickman, rather. Sorry. Steve but Fry either way, that's, yeah, those are both great. The, most of the casting's pretty good. It's a little too American, but that's because the money came from the States. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's still, it's not bad. Like, Moss Def is fine and, as Ford. And, yeah. and one, th- one thing that, that people don't say enough about that movie is Adam's- wrote and approved everything. 
that yeah. happened. Also, it's yeah. got a song and dance number with dolphins at the start of it. It can't be all bad. <laughs> I can't I can't tell if uh the look of early HD in BBC land is like I'm watching something that's poorly filmized or I'm watching something made on film on a TV with uh, motion smoothing. It's somewhere <laughs> It's kind of a bit of both, yeah. It's somewhere it also, in between there. It also <laughs> kind of feels like we're watching current Coronation Street. Well, <laughs> as, Definitely. As, as we're as we're still in the midst of of, you know, a global pandemic having Gwen talk about um uh, Reese being a conspiracy theorist. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Oh, so Reese, circa 2020, will be going on about QAnon and other such nonsense. Oh, God. Forget the weevils. Go after QAnon, Torchwood. Come on. 2020 is when everything changes. Yeah. Hmm. Now, uh, feel free to spoil this for me, given that I've seen it before. Um do Gwen and Jack have... I know Gwen and Owen have a thing later on this season. Mm-hmm. They have yeah. an affair. Marital rights oh, yeah. mean absolutely nothing in this show. No. I don't think Gwen and... They're not married yet. Because that's uh, well, the episode point. where they get married. In season two, correct. yeah. And that's actually quite a funny one, as I recall. Yeah, Phil Ford wrote that one, yeah. Yep. Uh, um, with, uh, what's her name? Nerys Hughes from Kinder. Nerys, yeah. Nerys Hughes. Um, I can't believe I remember that. Outside the police. Great. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, since the police are bad enough. Yeah. Hmm. Very Dude. piloty. Very piloty dialogue here right now. This is... Defund uh, Torchwood. <laughs> ATAC. Well, they, they were. No, ATAC, They actually. were defunded, yeah. All Torchwoods are bastards. Yeah. yeah. Well, all Torchwoods are obsolete now. And unit. Yeah, they are terrible people because they just all like... Like, they're not just stealing staplers and like... St- post-it notes like she's got that bit of tech oh let's put the sex well, gas the in doctor here. stole a tardis is he any better yeah. i mean this is, <laughs> this is a bit much this is a bit this is basically real hypnol so that's kind of gross <laughs> <laughs> oh boy yeah let's bring the home the secret glove that reads dead people's minds god everyone is terrible what does that say about jack like this is the team you put together here well, they don't show you. I mean, this anything. this seems like a no. this seems like a Jack team. I suppose. Oh, here we go. This is uh, they're going through the uh, yeah. Torchwood Four has kind of gone missing. We'll find it one day. Oh, that's such a such a leading question. Oh, this is, is this is this before Utopia? Mm-hmm. I think it, yes. it must be. Yeah, it is. This yeah. is just after, like a week after the One Array Bride, so season two. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. And I think they made this after. I think they crammed it in. I basically they made all of season two and finished that in like July with Runaway Bride, and then made this, and then we're right back at it. Basically, like good God, the film crews in, in Cardiff were employed all year round at this point, making this Sarah Jane, um, which uh, I think was it the same day. I think it is the same day the invasion the of the Bane. Invasion of yeah. the Bane. Happened the same damn day, that's right. Or around the same day anyway. I think it's the same day I want to look it up. Yeah. Here. That's wow. How yeah, bold is that? 2007. How bold is that to to premiere two very different uh pilot episodes of two different Doctor Who spin-offs, one for kids and one for adults. Yeah, but and, the only and, people who are going to watch both are Doctor Who fans. Obviously, but it, it reminds me of of the uh, that ancient Flintstones episode where I think Fred is in charge of uh, uh, doing uh, a birthday party for kids and then uh, a, a boys' night out. So he hires dancing girls for the boys' night out, <laughs> and I the clowns. Remember this. The clowns for the kids' party, and they get swapped. The kid and the clowns go to the. Uh, the boys' night out party, and and there's dancing girls dancing for these. That cartoon would never happen now. <laughs> no, no, it wouldn't. So by government, that could have very edict. well happened. That could have very well happened. And thinking, oh, don't forget to watch the Doctor Who spinoff. Oh, cool! Yay! Let's watch this Doctor. Okay, I don't know who this is. Ah, he's bleeding. Why did he say a rude word? Ah. <laughs> hmm. Well, 
of course, all three aspects are in, are in Star Trek Discovery now because they drop F-bombs for no reason. And uh, there's blood and gore. And then there's fantastical stuff for kids and stuff, too. And there's not that much blood and gore. They do drop F-bombs, which seem unnecessary, do, honestly. It, it is silly. I don't know why they do it. It's ridiculous. Limits your audience. They did it really in Picard really. as well. The excuse was... This is Star Trek for now, and this is what the characters would do. I'm like, well, yeah, but do you need to? It, Not really. Just no. don't do it to do it. Yeah. I mean, they didn't do much of it in the movies where they could have. Mm-hmm. No, they didn't. Very rare. I mean, and really, only Dr. Like, McCoy did, and he's the only character it really fits. And Data, legendarily, at the in Generations when the ship's about to crash. Uh, yeah, well, Generations ain't great. Well, okay, that is that is an okay bit. That's a great <laughs> okay, moment, yeah. Um. I remember the uh, audience reaction to Data's line. As the, right? Uh, yeah. In the theater. I just remember <laughs> how crappy that film was. Although I, somebody was had a, th- a thread a while back about it's moments you saw in the theater that people cheered at and that aren't Avengers. And uh, and I was I thought of a bunch, but I didn't think of this one as somebody else mentioned, which I witnessed when I went to see um, Undiscovered Country and when the Excelsior and the Enterprise are just pounding the living hell out of the bird of prey uh, <laughs> and people lost their minds <laughs> no way oh wow it was great well it was opening night probably so yeah. it's still a great scene which they then stole for generations <laughs> thinking trekkies wouldn't notice mm-hmm. come on guys hmm. well generations i went to opening night with the uh, local star trek fan club <laughs> You're just getting cooler and cooler by the yeah. second, Chris. <laughs> just like going West here. Edmonton Mall. Yeah. Back when Bourbon Street had cinemas. Was it Bourbon Street? No. Oh, yeah, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, it was uh, Bourbon Street. It was Bourbon Street. Silver, no, was the five, the, um, not Silver City. Was it, oh, no. Oh, what does this thing do? The famous what does this play? thing do? I, yeah, I've long since forgotten what this does. Is it, uh, is it like a scanner? Oh, wow. I could do this. Does it turn it automatically? Does it turn books into like... Oh, it's like a microfilm thing. I thought I might like. I would like a thing that like turns books into like BBC multicam studio plays. <laughs> yes, all of them starring Peter Cushing. Uh, there's Peter. Oh, wow, Derek Jacobs in this Lee. one. How about that? Or Christopher Lee? Yeah. Man, get hot, guys. You have interesting people. jobs. I wouldn't take them home with me. I know. That's going like they're basically on the clock right now. Mm-hmm. They're probably salaried. It's okay. I mean, it shows their curiosity, but also their complete lack of moral scruples here. Well, see, that's the other thing. Who is paying for this? Queen Victoria set up the fund, remember? All right. I guess. Who set up a fund? I forgot this. Queen Queen Victoria Victoria. in Tooth and Claw. Oh, right. And actually, watching those again, that whole second season, all they do is introduce Torchwood. It's really annoying. (laughs) That's true. That's true. It's all leading up to this. Yeah. In every single, I think the first uh, episode to mention what um, Saxon, Torchwood, and maybe even Bad Wolf is uh, Love and Monsters. Yeah, but Saxon makes sense. They're leading up to yeah. it at the end. Mm-hmm. Bad Wolf totally makes sense. Yeah. Oh, what a controversy! Thing is, I didn't even no. notice this. That's that's how twenty twenty is. I'm like, oh yeah, some stuff. Okay. All right. <laughs> Owen Harper, what a rogue. Burn Gorman, though, is delightful. I have had the pleasure of interviewing him twice at Chicago Tower. In fact, he was my first ever stage interview back oh, wow. in Chicago 2012, yeah. I think Funny fella or what? He's a great funny fellow. Very funny. Very, just very charming and uh, a, a very natty dresser. He's much more foppish than I, I thought he would be, to be honest. But I suppose I've only ever seen him on Torchwood, but... Uh, yeah, he and I, he and I shared a shared a, a a private laugh on a panel. We'll say at one point. All right, you can tell um, me off air about this. Yeah, I will do that. Yeah, he's a nice fellow. I liked him a lot, actually. Uh oh, oh no, she's been given not sex gas, but retcon, retcon. That's Retcon one. gas. Oh, yes. Oh, here we go. Yeah, these, <laughs> uh, I forgot. These populate a lot of... <laughs> and, okay, so you look at you look at that and, and you're like, okay, that's a cool shot and stuff. How would they do it? it got to be a helicopter at that point right. in time, right? Now, yeah, it's, now it it's a drone. Like you think yeah. of the, you think of the lighthouse shot in... in uh, uh, also, Fugitive what's the damn the point? Fugitive. Yeah, I know. He's just like... It he, looks I mean, cool. It, it does Is look he, cool. I'll give you that. But it's also—it's like silly. Assassin's Creed right now, where it's basically like he's found. <laughs> yeah, some I mean, point. okay, I've I've done that my fair share of video games because it's a video game, and I can't. Why not? But... Yeah, <laughs> just like he's gonna crawl, crawl up there. You know what? Video just... games don't have insurance. 
No, <laughs> that's the thing. And like, you'd expect it to have a cape or maybe the ability to fly down, like looking out among my people. I am here to protect you. Oh, <laughs> also, you also something like, the world basically doesn't here? have. Yeah. <laughs> Also something basically the world doesn't have anymore. CRT monitors. Oh, oh I miss them. yeah. I we're, in the, we're in the transition phase here, aren't we? Of uh, Yeah, because the pizza place has an LCD monitor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not LED, probably LCD. Look at that antiquated camera right there. This is three years before I bought my first um, HD TV. Well, not even HD. Yeah, it was HD, I guess. Flat screen, certainly. <laughs> Look at that giant thing. Good God. Remember moving, moving, uh, cause, cause this is, those things were big when we were, you know, younger and moving around a lot more yeah. and you're like, oh God, I gotta move my monitor. Ugh. Yeah. And I throw them around like they're nothing, like they're Frisbees. When just looks weird in this outfit? As PC Cooper? Yeah, cause I'm just so used to not seeing her in this outfit. Oh, I do like the uh, British uh, police uniform. All those checkers. <laughs> There's just something quaint about it. <laughs> I want I want a young Yasmin Khan to walk by her, like a little 10-year-old Yasmin Khan and be inspired. <laughs> I want to be like that cop one day. Yeah. <laughs> Completely Sheffield. obviating the actual episode where it shows where she's inspired <laughs> to be a cop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sheffield, Cardiff, same thing. Yeah. Well, she could be there on a vacation do, or something. They do field trips. Come on. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe Graham's in the back here being booked for something. Or <laughs> they're traveling in time. They travel back into Torchwood with the 13th Doctor, which they'll do in Ooh. Revolution of Docks. They won't. There, There is your uh, Trouble with Tribbles episode right there. Instead of going back into a past episode of Doctor Who, we go back into Torchwood and cleaning up weevils and stuff. The doctor finds herself swearing a lot for some strange reason. <laughs> it's all And it's all like Stazer sounds like we yeah. use to cover it up. Oh, is there coffee in that coffee cup? This is the thing that I've noticed now. If there's coffee cup in coffee in coffee cups, there's never on. ever ever coffee in the coffee cup. Hardly ever. Hardly. Ever. Do they they're... do they love a panning shot? They do. We got to use these dolly tracks, guys. Come on. <laughs> Brian Kelly directed this. Oh, okay. Oh, I, t- I, just... I don't. I don't think he's done any. Uh... Did he... uh, no? Brian Grant did. Um... Um, the long game. So I don't think he, I don't think he directed uh, any Doctor Who. I know that Ashley, Ashley, did Ashley Way direct Doctor Who? I know he directed this and I want, he sounds familiar. And, uh, oh. Colin Teague directed stuff later. And maybe even Graham Harper directed a torture to direct. I'm pretty sure Graham now. Harper did. Yeah. Ashley Way directed, uh, Hungry Earth, Cold Blood. There we go. I and the Attack of the Grask. Right. But that does just, not make him that does not make him mini scope worthy. <laughs> just misses out on the mini scope. Oh man. Sure, it's tearing him apart. Um, um, he, he must directed, be crushed. He directed six episodes of uh, six Torchwood episodes. altogether. Like what's the exchange rate? Like a Torchwood to Doctor Who? Like not enough, obviously. Not enough. Okay. He basically came in at the end of series one, did a bunch in series two, including the opener. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm I'm relatively enjoying this, uh, such as talking over something and not really paying much attention to it. But uh, I don't think it's as. Um, of course, we haven't gotten to Cyber Woman yet, or the Sex <laughs> Gas Woman. No, not yet. Or. Or Eugene, whatever that guy's name was, or oh, and the sh- um something shoes, um, random shoes, random shoes. Yeah, I like that episode. I yeah, I don't think I hated it. I think I was just like, and then out of time, episode ten is the the good one, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> the good one is that a PJ Hammond one? I think it is. There's he did two of them here. Uh, or no, it's Catherine Jenna. Did that one. I, I only know, I'm only familiar with the titles because I ripped Out of the time. Yeah, Catherine Trigena. Is Catherine Trigena, yeah. I yeah. will never hear PJ Hammond and not think PJ Harvey. Oh. PJ Hammond neither. did Small Worlds, the, Small Worlds, the fairy one. Yeah. And, and Ghost Machine? from Out of the Rain, which is the, the creepy one. 
Season out of the two. rain. Oh, that's a terrible one. I remember just hating that episode. I I remember you. I don't remember it at all. Episode. Just terrible. I yeah. love that one. As well, I as thought, I thought it was crap. What was that? We'll find out the year. Nothing of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I oh god, uh, that'll be interesting to look forward to next year. Hell, at this rate, we might be recording that next week. Um, that is a Klingon knife. That mm-hmm. is. So she's the evilest of them all. I forget why she's turning because, you know, we're not paying much attention to this, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, reasons she, pilot. She, she needed money for a bigger purse. Ah. Wasn't this the glory days of the giant ridiculous purse, though? The, the glory days. I don't know. Warren, you're a, you're a purseologist. You know all about the no, history No, I just remember reading Gawker at the time and they made fun of him a lot. Oh. That's how I know. They were giant, like basically, ha- you know. Well, I remember somebody comparing bags. Universal monsters, classic monsters, to different persons. Yeah. That's basically how I remember this. <laughs> and the likeness was pretty close. Right? I know. Get a special metal goblet. Is this a, uh, some sort of allegory for film work? <laughs> <laughs> she goes on to have the greatest probably the most uh thorough career out of anyone on torch and she's gone by episode one i remember her on was it law and order she did as well uk, UK or the uk okay I she's been a lot of stuff she was also she was in luther she was in luther wasn't she yeah. uh who's she in luther um, Wasn't she Luther's ex-wife or something? That's right. Yeah, I remember Paul McGann was his new, uh, right. her new yeah, yeah, boyfriend. Yeah. Dear Varma, here we go. Yeah, Rome, Luther, Human Target, Game of Thrones, of course. Uh, Carnival Row, she's in. Never watched Carnival Row. I saw the reviews no. were terrible and just didn't bother. I haven't watched anything, Warren, apart from Torchwood and Doctor Who. I'm aware of that, yes. <laughs> and Led yeah. Zeppelin concerts. And Led Zeppelin concerts. There's not many, though. Sadly, there is not many. I, th- <laughs> I thought she's... Very pretentious en- entrance. Yeah, she's in Mass Effect <laughs> Andromeda. Very the video CSO game too. as well. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. Hey, let's let's uh, superpose them behind water. That always yeah. works great. Or in front of water. She's also a series regular on the, the new spinning image, so... Mm-hmm. Huh. Oh, there's a well, lot. Well, they had of, to show him regenerate or whatever. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of big, 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 big talent writers and performers yeah. on, on the new spitting image. So, does this mean that they don't know about Jack's? Ability yeah, I was wondering to that myself. No, never have. No, he hasn't uh, hasn't died since he set up the team. That's a good point. Yeah. What? Some... Doesn't he get buried for like a thousand years at some point during yep. the run of this whole thing? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. he's technically, well, he's hundred years. Of he's a supposedly time. the face of Bo, which I do not uh-huh. accept as canon. <laughs> God, why not? I don't know. It seems stupid. Oh, it's a bit extreme. <laughs> Maybe it's just because it happened at the end of Last of the Time Lords, which... Again, Mm -hmm. isn't as bad as I remember, but still isn't great. Mm. Ah. Gruesome. Now you gotta clean this up. (laughs) Like, what's... Yeah. She's gonna put a perception filter, like, pylons around her? Put your toys back in the box. Can't be trusted. Just like your sex good perfume or whatever that stuff was. <laughs> yeah, put it in the box. Here we go. Yeah, they're all fessing up. What does she do, though? She OCR'd a book. Big deal. <laughs> I know. Like, what the hell? Not like this, you know, perv. <laughs> you wouldn't You wouldn't steal a car, would you? No. <laughs> oh, that's a somewhat... Oh, there's 007. I wonder if the actual 007's in there. Yep. George Lazenby's in there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, he's Welsh, right? Wow. I uh, know he's Australian. Australian. I'd forgotten yeah, this yeah. existed, this bit of Torchwood. Dalton's Welsh, yeah. Dalton's Welsh. Connery's Scottish. Welsh. More Welsh. British, I believe. Yeah, I believe English, Lord Rassilon. Uh, yes. 
Donald Sumter, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> which, uh, which, um, Hot Fuzz, that's the, uh, there was a whole thing with the Coronado yeah. movies where they made a point of getting old jizz bonds in just for the hell of it. Oh, did they really? I didn't know that. Yeah. So Pierce Brosnan's in, um, the, the third one. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, uh World's uh, End. The, the, and the World, World's End. Yeah. At World's End. Yeah. Who's in, Sean, uh, who's in Shaun of the Dead? I don't Chucky. think anybody is because there was, oh. but definitely just, Dalton, they got into Hot Fuzz and he's great in Hot yeah. Fuzz. He's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, it's making me flashback to Roger Moore in Cannonball Run 2. Mm-hmm. Unless I'm mixing up Brosnan and, and Dalton being the other films. I can't remember. I suppose actually we haven't found out about, like we we know that Jack comes back to life at the end of um, uh, Parting of the Ways mysteriously, but we don't know that that's a recurring thing. That's like, this is his right. new skill. So that, that shot to the that's head true. was a bit yeah. of a shock. That is, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, he, obviously he's, uh, since then he's learned to take big gasps of air when he comes back to life. Cause he did do it here as if to not spoil the surprise. <laughs> I don't remember how many times he gets killed in this. Several, I would assume. Yeah. I mean, hell, they're both standing you, up. Okay. I thought they were standing up top of the building for no reason. I what's the point of having a, an immortal, um, they are standing on the building. If, if you're not they gonna, are standing you know, on the building. All right. Never mind. <laughs> exactly. Oh wait, is this the? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pterodactyl. And nobody sees who that. The, who let the pterodactyl out? For God's also, sake! Also, I like, I like that this big monument building looks like a loaf of bread. Uh, yeah, it does kind of actually. They call it the bread loaf in Cardiff. Oh, here's a sex what, gas alien. I don't, I don't remember what comedy show it was, but they were doing it at the, at the time a Torchwood parody, and whoever the main guy was, he was playing Jack. And whenever they, they they came out in the truck, and he would just do these pirouettes anytime they went to a in every action <laughs> was sequence. That, was that a John Coltrane thing? I think it was John Coltrane. Yeah. Uh, man, even the credits were rolling a little slower back in those days. So let's have a look here. Uh, this well, and co-producer and Chris Chibnall. Strictly come dancing or whatever. Yeah. Bennett went on mentions in there. Script editor. Uh, it's, it's okay. This is moving a bit fast here. Um, Ben Morris, trying to... Claire Pritchard, makeup supervisor, later went on to Doctor Who. Andy sure. Pryor. Andy Pryor, of course. Ray Holman. Will Ray Cohen. Goals. Will Cohen. Yeah. Davies Gardner. Hey, 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 hey. And a Canadian <laughs> Association project. with the CBC. That's right. Did <laughs> that air on CBC? Sure. Yeah. I don't Did remember where Did the CBC ever show it? I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember. I th- wasn't it on space? I want to say it was space, but uh, man... Well, well, I mean, you can have, have CBC a... money and not show up on CBC. That would be typical Canadian nonsense. <laughs> Here's our money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's, that's fair. That's true. It was fair. Yeah. It did show up on BBC America in September of 2007. So, but mm. uh, I don't remember what, if, when, or I'm sure it did show up somewhere in probably late at night on CBC or something. I can't remember. I can't recall. Maybe we'll look into it uh, in time for next week's episode or more accurately, uh, the next next week's episode because uh, we're lazy like that. Um, uh, we hope you enjoyed uh, part one of our, our look back to Torchwood, <laughs> Doctor Who's uh, officially probably second spinoff series given that uh, Invasion of the Bay probably aired step a couple of hours. Breakings? That's what I want to know. Uh, I don't, well, that was the third one, I guess. Yeah, we'll get to that. So it's K9 and Company is really the first. Anyway, uh, next yeah, week will be Torchwood uh, Season 1, Episode 2, Day 1. So join us for that, won't you? Uh, until then, I am Steven in Edmonton. Morning, Vancouver. And Chris in Edmonton. So long for now. You've been listening to Radio Free Scarrow. Find us online at RadioFreeScarrow.com. Follow us on Twitter and Tumblr at Radio Free Scarrow. Subscribe to us on iTunes and donate to the show at Patreon.com forward slash Radio Free Scarrow. Thank you.